Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Etho and welcome back to the Let's Play series. So in the last couple episodes, we've been working on this villager project and we're back here again. We did the uh, the planning, the designing, and the testing of this thing. And our goal for today is to move on to the building. We want to scale this project up. Uh, we just have the one unit here that we've been using for the, the, the designing and testing. Uh, but in total, we want to make seven of these things. And that means we also need to build a room and, and try and make it look nice and uh, make it a space we actually want to be in, <laughs> not like an ugly cave. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is probably worth explaining as well. If you're wondering why we're building this new area that's uh, definitely not a base, <laughs> by an end portal here, uh, the reason is it's mostly for me. So if you look at our coordinates, we're at X like 11,000, Z about 9,000. That's actually quite a bit uh, ways away from home, right? So I can just hop in here. Whenever I need to head back to pick up something, which is quite often, unfortunately, I can't I can't slide up these stairs too well anymore. I don't know why that is. I'm gonna have to change them. But anyways, we can hop back into the portal, and now we're back at uh, zero zero basically. So we're we're back home. I can pick stuff up, and then I can just take a ice road back to where we were, and it takes a lot less time. Okay, so I'm expecting this build we're working on is gonna be fairly large just from that initial layout we did of it. Uh, we're going to need quite a few blocks, so I figured let's lay out an actual block pellet, figure out what we generally want to try to go for here so we know what blocks we're going to need for this. And I think this is going to work out okay. It's got a lot of brown in it. I love earth tone colors. They help to make a build feel, you know, nice and cozy like a warm blanket. But you also got to be careful. <laughs> Don't go too brown or it's going to look, uh, you know, kind of pukey, kind of uh, ugh. You know, you, you got to hit strike a nice balance with it. So I'm hoping the, the brighter red and the greens and maybe the sandstone will break up the brown enough that it'll look okay. We're going to use this for the ceiling. And it looks like our very first step to collecting things is actually going to be to pay a visit to the shulker reactor in the end because uh, we're out of shulker shells. So hard to move stuff around when you don't have shulker boxes. I'm going to spend a bit of time here. I think I spent about three hours at the shulker reactor there and uh, we're loaded up again. We got nine stacks in that time. Not the fastest farm in the world, but it definitely works uh, good enough for my single player here. Uh, where, what do you think happened to my map there? <laughs> that thing has been perfectly fine for years, and now I look at it today, and there's four missing. How do you think that happened? I don't know. It's a mystery. Who took them? Was it you? Was it me? I sure hope not, because I don't remember doing that. But yeah, they're, they're gone. For the longest time in this series, I only had a few shulker boxes, and I used them very carefully. I always made sure to clean them out and organize them and uh you know I, I was very careful on my shulker box usage and now that i got the shulker farm i'm just leaving them everywhere i'm not organizing them it's a real disaster oh there we go i need that one okay good <laughs> and you, you think there's a few here oh trust me they're all over the world a lot of the time we build these things in our world here that uh, don't use super often and then in the future when i do want to use it it's like how do I use it? <laughs> I, I should have left some instructions for myself. I think it was like, no, not like that. Like I should have clear written instructions what buttons to press here and I don't have them. Uh, right click. Oh, see if we can figure it out. I know it's right click and left click. I just don't remember the order. There we go. Got it figured out. Now I just got to remember the instruction booklet is going to be inside the barrel here. So if I ever forget, that's where it is. Mud plus wheat equals packed mud. And the last thing we got to pick up here is a bunch of wood from our tree farms. We're going to need spruce. We're going to need dark oak and especially the mangrove wood. And by the way, you know, I do read your guys' comments. Don't think I don't. <laughs> Uh, back when we built the tree farm here, a lot of you suggested I build a tunnel between the, the two tree farms. I, I, I did make the tunnel, I just haven't decorated it yet, uh, but it was, it was a good suggestion. Um, Alright, you think I can remember how to use this one? I think it's pretty much like the other one. Except we also need the axe with this one because of the, the roots and stuff. Down, down we go. Uh oh, whoa, whoa, what am I stuck on? Oh, that's a leaf! Well, that's, that's not good. <laughs> Alright, it's working. Right? 
still works. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay, so we're back here again and we got a bunch of supplies together. We can probably get started. Might have to pick up a few things, but no big deal. Um, so let's talk a little bit about building, shall we? Uh, in the past, whenever I would build something, I would, I would do it kind of like this. I'd put down a few blocks and be like, okay. I'd step back and analyze. That's what it looks like with the mangrove planks. Okay, okay. Then I would remove those and I'd try another block. Like, okay, let's get some spruce planks down. Step back and look at those. And then I would compare the two. And usually I'd be able to figure out which one I liked more. I would go with that one and then I would repeat that a bunch of times. And eventually you can get a structure built. Now the problem with that is I would never be able to really understand or explain why I like something more than another thing. It was just like a gut feeling, right? It was almost like um, passive learning. And I think a lot of people do that when they play games or just learning things in general. You have like a, a passive ability in your brain to get better at something. The more you do it, you learn from your mistakes. And even though you don't really analyze why something is better, better than another thing, you'll eventually intuitively kind of figure it out over time. Um, but I think the real key to learning stuff is to passively learn it, learn through experience in that, but then also actively try to learn like what's going on, try to analyze why something is the way it is. Uh, so I've been trying to do that over the years of playing Minecraft here, <laughs> try to almost generate a list of, of rules or guidelines to building like objectively, this will make it better. Yeah, so I thought we could use this room we're going to build as a, a good opportunity to maybe demonstrate one of these building ideas I think is important. The idea of having focus in your builds. So maybe you've done it before. I, I know I do it. You have an empty room and you just throw stuff inside to fill it up and eventually it looks like it's done. <laughs> I think the better way to build though is to identify as soon as possible what the focus of your build should be and then build around that focus. So in our case here... The main focus of our build is going to be the villagers. These are the guys I want to stand out. Like as soon as you enter your, the room, your eyes should go towards the villagers. And the secondary focus we're going to have for this room is uh, these emeralds. I'm going to have three of these emeralds, kind of like the triple dollar sign. Uh, we're going to have triple emeralds to represent the trade times instead of using lamps. I think this is a better, better idea. And we'll light these up when it's trading time. Okay, so those are our two areas of focus. Now, how do we actually get our eyes to go towards our areas of focus? Uh, there's a bunch of ways, actually. So one of the easy ways is with lighting. So we can just have more lighting around our focus, and naturally our eyes will go towards that thing. So we're going to have a bunch of uh, frog lights by our villagers here. Oh, got to fix that. Get that back. Uh-huh. Uh, another way to get focus is with color. So... I just laid this out as a, a template, but we're not actually going to be using brown here <laughs> because brown does not really catch the eye. It's, it's more of a neutral color, right? We want stuff that stands out. That's where we're going to get the red in here because it's a bold color. And not only that, another thing we're doing here is we're having contrast. Contrast also grabs the eye because red and green are contrasting colors so we got the green lighting and then we got the the red here but uh, most importantly here we also have the blue water which is really going to stand out because again it's a bold color it's kind of like a bright blue right um it contrasts which again is good with our our green and our red uh and another trick we're going to do is we're going to keep it as a unique feature of the room so if you ever want to grab attention you know the analogy of the blank sheet of paper with a, a dot on it? Your eyes always go towards the dot. Uh, likewise, if we just have blue in one spot or like where our villagers are in the room, our eyes will go to that dot on the paper kind of thing. So we're going to do that. Uh, another cool trick you can do is the shaping of the room. So we're almost making like a bullseye here just with the shape of this. It, it goes inward in the middle and slowly progresses outward that again kind of funnels your view towards the center right and uh, another trick similar to that is detail any area of the room that has more detail than other areas is going to grab your attention so we can do something for example like uh we got the triple dots of sandstone here kind of stands out right but it's not like overwhelmingly 
off-putting. <laughs> That's the thing you gotta be careful. It's gotta kind of match the build too. Otherwise it's gonna look bad. Um, but like if we just have an item frame, let's say we use bread to represent the farmer villagers. That's a super high detailed thing. Once we see that, our eyes are gonna go in that direction. And another one of the bigger ways of grabbing someone's focus is uh, movement. So if you can ever get movement onto the thing you want them to focus on, we're kind of lucky in this situation that our villagers are actually moving here. <laughs> Normally, that's kind of hard to pull off in Minecraft, but uh, yeah, kind of worked out in this case. Uh-huh. Uh, some other general building rules, uh, you know, people make fun of me for this, but uh, always strip your logs. If you're ever not sure, 95% of the time they look better if they're stripped. Uh-huh. That's like an Etho rule. Uh, another thing we're going to do here... Let's talk a little bit about the function of our, our build here. So I hit some crafting tables under the trap doors. If I ever need to craft something, it should be close. And I think I'm going to hide an ender chest under the middle one. For all the, all these uh, seven stations. So i got to make sure I don't flood the, the redstone like I always do. <laughs> so if I ever need to access it, I can just flip that up. Uh, this should protect the villagers from zombies, like the two tall ones, because... Uh, the trap door is in the way here. This is less than a two block space. Uh, but for the baby zombies, I am concerned about those guys. Again, we'll, we'll try to light up the area so it's not an issue, but it seems you always miss a spot, right? Um, so we're going to do another trick. What we can do is put carpets, or in our case, uh, the moss here, moss carpet, so that they think when they walk over here, they're going to take fall damage. Like they, they see that this as a drop. Um, it should stop the baby zombies from trying to attack the villagers. Okay, so we just made this stick out three blocks in the front here. So it's a four block drop underneath all the ones we're walking on here. That should create a line that the baby zombies won't attempt to cross. They'll walk up to the line, like they'll walk up to here probably, and then stop. The only flaw with this style of protection for villagers is uh, if another zombie comes by and nudges them onto the carpet, he might get far enough where he'll... He'll be allowed to cross then, and then he'll get them. <laughs> so that's the only problem with it. But it is a, a big layer of protection against the getting your villagers killed. Another thing we can do is put uh, diamond armor on our villagers and put thorns on the diamond armor, and they'll be able to kill a few uh, zombies just themselves, uh, which is something I'll probably do too. Uh, other than that, just lighting up the area is the most important thing. Okay, uh, we're going to, I think, put beehives here next. Beehives are, have got to be one of my favorite blocks in this game. <laughs> they look so nice. I really like this texture. Um, ooh, where do I, which one do I put it on? I think this one here, right? There we go. Yeah, so we're, again, we're going to use like the lightness. Like we have different colors of brown here. We got lighter browns and darker browns. Dark brown is where we don't want to look. Lighter browns are going to kind of guide our eyes towards the center too. So let's put a darker brown on the edges. Uh, I think I'm going to go mangrove here. Oh, it just turned on. You see that? <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, check it out. We've been uh, building away here, uh, getting things done, and the room is really coming together. Still got a little bit left to go on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we just copied over what we had figured out there to the other seven units, and that pretty much filled up most of the room. And then I just added in a few leaves because it was looking very... Uh, plain and uniform that just kind of breaks up the room with a bit of asymmetry added a line to divide the the top and the bottom part of the room and then expanded up to the ceiling here so that we'd have space for our emerald display to show when it's trading time um that also helps make the room feel a lot more impressive just by having that extra vertical height to it even though it's not really used space or anything uh, so we got some lamps above each of the emeralds, all three of them, and uh, that's just the circuit we worked out last episode. Um, I got it installed in the ceiling here. I'll go, I'll go show you real quick. <laughs> Not that uh, it's changed really, but uh, just in case you're curious how, how it's implemented. Let me give you a quick little view here. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's exactly the same as what we saw in the last episode. And then uh, there's a lamp. Oh, I thought there was a lamp there. Wait, how did I do this? <laughs> no, this is the first one. Oh, yeah, this is the middle emerald underneath that lamp. Then this one, I got it branching over to this light here. And then when the third one's lit up, oh, you see it's starting to go down. Only two of them are lit up right now. 
Uh, the third one, it goes to the left here and lights up that lamp. Look, only two of them are on now. Uh huh. I, I think that's a cool feature to the room. Um, so like, like there's ways to add focus to a room, there's also ways to detract focus from a room. So you gotta be careful when you're building, you don't do that if you, like if, in, in my case here, I don't want to block the villagers, right? So like a lot of times I was trying to figure out what to do with the middle of the room here. A lot of builds, what you might do is build uh, partial walls or put up pillars somewhere in the room. But we can't really do that in this example. Imagine if we had pillars here or some kind of partial wall. Um, then when we're standing here, that kind of just directs our attention right to the center, which is fine for our sign here and for like maybe the, the middle three there. But then it blocks our view of the ones on the right and the left, right? So it's not really ideal. So if we don't want just a plain old floor here, big flat floor, our real only option is to go down. And I, I was trying to think of how to do that. We have uh, two things I thought of. We could either have like a glass floor and put something interesting underneath the glass, or I think we're going to go for a downward staircase that goes towards the end portal. Um, so that means we got to move all these villagers over because uh, they're they're in our way now and as you might have expected they're not really cooperating with me too well here so we're gonna do this instead just manually move them all over <laughs> well listen move them one block at a time and eventually they'll get in the place i actually want them to be let's think about this now so how should we do the entrance to this room originally i was thinking we'd enter around here like this is what we would see when we enter the room which i think is a pretty good view and then the door frame would be on the right and the left there um but check this out, I got thinking, what if we enter like two blocks up and then you almost have an overview of the room before you step into it? I think it's cool. I really like having height variations in rooms. I think it makes them way more interesting than just keeping them all flat. We might have something here. Let's just check one thing before we commit to this. I'm gonna put uh, some fences around here. I wanna see if that obstructs our view of the villagers too much or if it'll be okay. Okay, so we're gonna enter the room around up up higher here. Yeah, we can see over the fence that way too, so that's cool. Um, we're gonna have a staircase that goes down to the end portal, down underground there. And then we're gonna remove the blocks on the left and right here, and we'll have two more staircases that take us into the room. I'll, I'll show you what I mean, <laughs> just one sec. Uh, I could do this off camera, but let's do a little bit of building together. We, ne we never built together. Well, we do, but not, not as much as we used to. Okay, so this will come come up here, I think. Imagining like a two block staircase, just to enter the room, like over here. Yeah, probably here is fine. Is this three wide? Yeah, this is three wide still, good. And bring it down to this side. And I think we're gonna go with beehives again <laughs> for like a, a floor to enter the room here. This will all be beehives over here. Okay, let's make sure I light it up. I gotta really watch as I'm building that I don't let zombies spawn or we might have issues. Uh, our carpet should save us, but you never know, right? Okay, uh, and then I'm thinking the staircase down to the end portal is gonna be here. All right, everybody. Well, I got a little bit more done on the room here. I think it's about finished now, actually. And I got to say, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I think it's it's pretty cool. It's almost like a luxurious uh, color scheme, isn't it? Something about it feels feels very nice, actually. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Um, yeah, so this takes us down to the end portal over here. Uh, I got to say, though, I am such a slow builder in this game. It's got to be probably my biggest weakness. Uh, I don't know how to get faster either. Everything just seems to take forever. Even a room like this, which has a lot of repetition, still took me forever. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. Um, so I'm not sure I'm entirely happy with the top there, but we'll, we'll keep it like that for now, and I might I might tweak it a little bit later, but uh, it should be good. Now, we also need to have storage for the items we get from the villagers. That's going to go just outside here somewhere. We're also going to have storage for enchanted books. Um, and probably an enchanting area outside here, which we'll get to in another episode. Uh, we also got to get the, the villagers in the, the system, which I'll, I'll do later too. Because <laughs> this is taking forever. Uh, anyways, so let's just take a look upstairs too. I got every single area spawn proof, I'm pretty sure. We put carpets down, we got sandstone up here. 
moving on here. So we're going to try something a little bit different this episode, and uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I got a challenge for you guys. You like challenges, right? This is uh, definitely not me trying to get you to do my work for me. No, no, no. This is a, an exciting challenge for you to uh, try, try work out the puzzle on, okay? <laughs> All right, here's the deal. So as you know, we had the Ender Porter set up in our world. They still kind of work, but not really. I was using these things all the time uh, before that change where we got the simulation distance. Uh, where is it? Options, video settings. These will work perfectly fine if I crank my simulation distance way up. But the problem is my chunks don't load that fast. I need a better computer, really, to, to get it to work. Because not only did they add the simulation distance thing, but they made it so chunks don't load in a square. They load in a circle now. And I had everything, like perfectly as far away as possible <laughs> so i need to crank my chunks up to like 24 or something to to make them work so i i essentially what i'm getting at is i gotta redo these right um as i was using the, these though i did notice a couple issues like when you die the ender pearls don't work anymore you have to reset them all which is kind of frustrating i was hoping you know if we uh, just waited, Mojang would change that, but it still hasn't been changed. So now my next question is, how do we make the system deal with that problem? And that's where you guys come in, because you're going to solve this problem for me, right? Yes, of course. Okay, so here's the situation. Uh, we want to make a tube, like we're, let's say we go to use Ender Porter and we hit the button and nothing happens because the Ender Pearl needs to be reset at the next station. Rather than flying to the next station to set it, I want to have a tube. We can just chuck an ender pearl down and it'll be able to transport to the next station in a few seconds. And then we, when we get teleported there, we can just set an ender pearl and it's fine and we can transport instantly the next time. Uh, hopefully that made sense. So my question is for you guys, what is the fastest way to move an ender pearl in this game? Now I know the answer is actually TNT. But we're in single player here without any TNT duping. So you got to factor in the sand collection time if we're going to go with the TNT route. And I don't think that will ever be faster using TNT. So I think the quickest way that I could uh, come up with is uh, skimming an ender pearl over top water. We'll build like a track underground. Um, we'll chuck our ender pearl into the system. And then we have to have these stations to move it down the the... The water here basically so that's easy to do now the thing is you'll notice sometimes it like hops up and down like that and it's going different distances here sometimes it goes pretty far sometimes it's, it goes shorter and that the idea i think is we would want to have another slime block launcher like somewhere down the line here to to amplify the ender pearl get it moving further down the the lane because we want to transport them about 100 to 200 blocks. But yeah, I've definitely tried quite a few things with this. And uh, pretty much everything I've tried hasn't gotten me any closer to solving the problem. So I thought I'd open it up to you guys. Maybe you'll be able to figure it out. Um, I have, for example, experimented with zero ticking pistons as well. Uh, I thought maybe you could set up a, like a piston bolt for moving the ender pearls. It would be very complicated. But if, if it's instant, that would be pretty cool, right? Uh, thing is, it the piston doesn't really push the ender pearl; it, it pulls it if you zero tick it. So, yeah. Well, if you push it, then it uh, it pushes it. Like if, if it's not zero ticked. Um, yeah. So that didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> and uh, every every attempt to stabilize the ender pearl has failed for me because the bubble columns just seem to be random totally. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll see what you guys say about this. Have fun. Well, anyways, I think it's time we wrap up our episode here with the comment of the day, which says, Hey, Etho, I hope all is going well for you and your family, but I had a question. Are you ever going to post as frequent as you used to? Also, congrats on almost hitting 2.5 mil. I'm glad you're still growing. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'm doing good in my family. Um, This is an interesting one. I was debating how much I should share about this. <laughs> Because, uh, to be honest, I, I sort of tried to hide this uh, back in the day. But I think enough time has passed that uh, I'm, I'm okay with talking about it a little bit more freely now. Um, so, first off, when I first started YouTube, like early days 2010, 
uh, all the way up to about 2015. I played like 8 to 12 hours every single day. I played this game a ton. <laughs> uh, then something happened. You guys remember the whole uh, Microsoft buying Mojang and they didn't release an update for like two years? Uh, and then when they did, it was the horse update to, or the combat update, I should say. And uh, not too many people like that. <laughs> yeah. I was playing the game to eight to eight to twelve hours a day, trying to come up with new ideas of things to show off to you guys, and uh, nothing was changing in the game. I eventually hit a, a pretty big burnout in the game during that time, and ever since then, I haven't been playing quite as much. I've I've been limiting my time a bit more in the game, just so that doesn't happen again. Um, so I try to only play Minecraft when I want to these days. I'll still play quite a few hours, but. Uh, Definitely not 8 to 12 like I used to. Because if you don't know, if you ever experience burnout with an activity, the absolute worst thing you can do is force yourself to do that activity when you don't want to. Um, you'll just go through it again if you do. So, yeah, being careful on that front. The other thing that's sort of changed is YouTube itself. It's not really YouTube anymore. Emphasis on the U. It's more of a corporate tube these days if you don't know um to really make it on youtube you might notice like it's corporations that are doing it not people um and when it is people they have teams they have editors they have people making their thumbnails they have people writing scripts for them it's very rare you actually see an individual succeeding on youtube these days so in order to make it you can't really do what you used to like 10 years ago. <laughs> you can't just record for 30 minutes and post a video. No, that doesn't work. You have to like put a lot of time into an episode and try to get it polished and make sure the episode brings value to people. Otherwise, why would they watch it, right? And when there's so much competition on YouTube for their attention. Um, so on that front, I can't post as often as I used to just because I have to spend a lot more time on an episode to make it worth your while to watch it uh, compared to what else is on YouTube. Um, and so that's a big factor as well. So yeah, it, it's probably never going to be like the olden days. I hate to say it, but hopefully I can keep it going somewhat regularly here. <laughs> I'm not making any promises. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode at least, and thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.